Hello and welcome to Monorailing for Dummies, the how-to show for monorailing dummies just like me. Now the next thing we're going to need to do for the main thing is we're going to want to paint it and stuff and particularly get the model ready for painting. Now I think what we're going to use is we're going to use something a lot cheaper than ordinary model paint. Namely, this Rust-Oleum type stuff. Now this stuff here is some metallic aluminum type stuff. This will be great for the the grain bins. And then we have this rust oleum satin granite, which just so happens to be about the right color I need. Because in looking at pictures, you know, of grain elevators, particularly older ones, you know, kind of what I'm trying to portray, they they don't have a steel color or something. It's more of a more of a satin granite type color. Uh, and so I'm kind of looking around seeing what kind of paints would work. And I thought, you know, this Rust-Oleum stuff, it costs about the same as one of these itty bitty cans of spray paint or little bottles of stuff. It's a lot cheaper. So let, that's just one way to make things a little bit cheaper. If you can use some of this Rust-Oleum spray paint, it can maybe make things a little bit cheaper. So the first thing we need to do is fill in any cracks and stuff uh, so that it looks more like a whole building and not have cracks where it's not supposed to be. Also, we're going to need to put in the uh, windows and, stu uh, and stuff like that. So, without any further ado, let's go down to the workbench and start filling in the cracks. Okay, here we are at the workbench. So now I'm going to need to install the windows here. Let's see, we're going to need one, two, three, that window just went right through the window, and four. So we need four windows. Also, we need three doors for over here. Let's get them loose. Okay, and then we just need this door here. So, this door I may need to paint separate. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to use for this door yet, so I think I'm going to leave this one separate, not glue it in, do put it in later. So I'm not sure if this is the type of door I want, and if it is, I'm not sure if I want to paint it the gray color. Probably want a different color. I'm not sure, so I'll probably leave this one out later. Also, if you notice, I've, I have glued the roof piece on over here. And real simple matter, just making sure putting the one end right along the edge here like so, and then overlapping the other roof piece, and then just marking it underneath. And once again, I got a piece of wood here, wood dowel to strengthen this up. So, let's see these windows they come in, yeah, from the nope, they go in from the front. Okay, that makes things easier. Okay. And They'll probably need a little bit of sanding and touch up to get rid of that flash. Ah, here's my knife. There goes my knife. Okay, now for the doors. Okay, all the pieces are ready for use. So, use, use my tester's plastic cement. 
top glue it in just going to use the cap here sort of something to hold the glue then take a micro brush a fine one put a little bit of glue in there and then put it in place oh there and I just realized there is a top and there is a bottom there's a little bit of a ledge here for the bottom so take note of that There we go. Now let's move all my junk off to the side, or over to this side, I should say. And then we can install the doors here. Okay, let's let's test fit these to make sure you know how they work. Okay, yeah. Now. Nice thing about these doors here, you can place them at any point. You can hit it here or here. And, you know, just thinking now, you know, maybe it might be wise to create a shadow box here with the door open all the way, like so. Then create a shadow box with loading feet or something like that that might be an interesting effect and I think I may go with that so yeah these two doors here will be closed because they'll hardly ever be used because this is the door we're going to use for the most part because the spots for these cars here is primarily going to be used for, for hopper car storage so Let's put a little dab of glue up in here. And then a little bit on the bottom. There, that door's in place. Okay, that's in place. Now, for this door, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to glue this on here and create, like I said, the shadow, the shadow box. But I think I'm only going to glue right on the little hinge there so that if I do decide to have it shut, I can easily just, because there is a fourth door that I can use. I can scrape this little bit here off and remove the door. I'm gonna need a damn more glue, I think.
want that guy. Okay, now we need to start filling in some of these cracks here. Start filling in the areas that it didn't meet up real well. And, unless, and if you're like me, a model routing dummy, you are going to get cracks. So what I'm going to use here is this fast drying white putty. I got this from Micromark. So... I'm going to try and use it to fill in the cracks. Using a hobby knife to install it. Now most of these cracks here uh, what you may have to do is just, just fill it in like that and then have to scrape a lot of it out of the, these cracks here. The two buildings here join is going to need a little bit. Okay, now there's a little bit of a crack in the here, but I think we're going to fill some of these cracks from the back. Part of it's due to the fact that, you know, it's beveled edge here. So if we could just squish this in the back here. Hopefully that can fill up any imperfections. There's another spot right up in here where it really did not join real well. Or I did not cut real well is probably the way I should put it. I'm gonna put a bunch in the back there. Hopefully it will do two things. Number one, it'll help reinforce the join a little bit. Two, hopefully it'll kinda 
scooch on out a little bit. And kind of hopefully be able to see from the front the, that the crack is nicely filled in. It did kind of help a little bit. It's not perfect by any means. And I can see that a little bit is from the back has squished forward. It just needs a little bit of a trim in this crack here. But yeah, it did exactly what I hoped to do here. <sighs> Filled up the crack real nicely. Okay, there's uh... So I think what we need to do now... The only real spot where I really need to fill in some crack is maybe this roof piece over here a little bit. But mainly this bit right here. So I think that's what we're going to do next. Okay, I wasn't able to show it to you, because I, I, I can't show you and fill it up at the same time. But after a lot of work, I was able to kind of fill in the crack a little bit. I'm hoping that the paint job will hopefully cover up any imperfections. But I think that this here is ready for painting. Now, like I said, I did not fill this door in, and I... I haven't put in the original spout for loading box cars, so I think because what I'm probably going to do, so I'll probably paint that separately, and especially a lot of these old downspouts that I've seen, they're pretty much rust. <laughs> it's the, that's the main color, and I think I could do a better job painting the rust color on it if I paint the spout separately and then paint it rust paint it a nice rust color, and then install it. So I think that's what I'm going to do there. So I think the next step here will be to go and start spray painting this. Okay, here we are in the garage. I also brought this out because I'm going to paint it the same color, the, the dryer. So I'm out in the garage here, so it's nicely ventilated and stuff. The door's open. It's a beautiful day for once. So I'm using gloves. These are actually some old hospital gloves that my mom brought home from the hospital. But they were thrown away because they were expired. Though how a plastic glove can be expired, I don't know. So just get a few sprays out to get get the spray flowing really nicely. And I think to start out with, I'm going to spray the main part down so I can hold it better. Then I'm going to spray it from a bit of a distance in fairly light coats. Mainly going with the The, the flow of the steel. Last thing you really want is to put it on too thick at once.
Okay, that's looking good. So I'll let that dry and probably give it one or two more coats and then we'll see how she looks on the layout. Okay, I've done all the coats necessary and I tell you it looks good. It, the color is about perfect. Now one thing to note, once you think you got it all nicely sprayed, pick it up, well of course it's going to be dry, pick it up and look all around and see okay is there any parts that I miss because of stuff hanging. One thing I noticed it's like right up in here, in here, you know, right under the roof pieces. Um, it wasn't painted real good yet. So, so once I saw that, I was able to do that. Same with this here. There's a lot of pieces that that um, could get missed. So this bottom part here, I'm going to be painting it a cement color because I believe this is, should be cement. But I can always come back later for that. Now, this elevator thing here, I have yet to decide what color I'm going to use. Now, the, I've seen several colors for these. I've seen blues, I've seen reds, I've seen yellows and reds. So, I haven't quite decided what color I'm going to go with yet. Now, if you remember over here, this little elevator here, I used sort of a bluish color, which really turned out nice. So I'm thinking I'm going uh, with yellow. I'm not sure. And then next, what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm going to take that aluminum spray paint, uh, this stuff, the metallic uh, aluminum. I'm going to use that to... Uh, spray paint these silos here glue the, the lid on of course and once again I'm going to take that putty stuff and fill in some of these cracks in the back here make sure that it's nice and doesn't look like there's that many cracks or anything where it got put together bad or not necessarily bad but not real well but I think next time I'm going to show you how I'm going to make these concrete silos here so that's the plans for the moment. So far this is looking very good. Okay, that's going to have to be it for today. Like I said, things are really starting to shape up. So I, I really liked how that rust only and paint turned out. It's perfect color. I've been looking for a model and paint that had that type of gray, but I just couldn't find one that just fit. And that one worked. It was a whole lot cheaper. Same goes for the aluminum. I haven't tried this out but I'm hoping that it's going to work. And, and if it's a little bit too shiny and if it doesn't work I can always try and find some other aluminum paint or at the very least maybe use some dull cold if it's a little bit too sparkly or shiny or something. As I haven't tried this out yet. I'm hoping it'll work good. So until next time keep working on your model railroads keep having fun and until next time Keep your trains on the tracks.